But I do want to start. Adam uh, Johansson had a had an article uh, at the Express about uh, Eric Carlson. Did a one on one interview with him. Of course, he won the uh, the Golden Boot as the best. Uh, uh, not, not the Golden, golden boot. boot. Not the Golden gold, Boot. It's called Gold Puckin. <laughs> yeah, the Gold Puckin. The uh, for the best Swedish player, and uh, that was his third one that he's won. First one since uh, 2016, I, I think, or 17. And in that, he went into pretty in depth about where he's at as far as trades. And, you know, he's told the Sharks, hey, I want to be traded. He admits he's talked to Pittsburgh and Seattle and Toronto and some other teams. Realistically, like like Pittsburgh, I know a lot of people are like, well, Pittsburgh, come on. But if I'm the Pittsburgh Penguins, Frank, it actually makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. It makes a ton of sense. And so, you know, we looked at it and I was batting around some possible trade ideas and you know, now Jeff Petrie, I think if you're trading for Carlson, he's got to go simply for cap number, but he has a 15 team, no trade list. So I don't know if San Jose is on it or not. I'm guessing it might not be. So I'm, I'm kind of curious to see where that one goes, but between Pittsburgh, Toronto, Seattle, I'm not sure Carolina is realistically a fit like Pittsburgh, I think is the best fit. They could be. I mean, if, if you think about it from their perspective, right. You've already got a pile of players in that age range. You've got some contract term on those players. Why not try and load up and add to your team in a significant way with a hundred point defenseman and really go all in? I mean, if the point is to emphasize and extend the window as long as long and as deep as possible with Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin. Why wouldn't you try to surround them with a Norris Trophy winning defenseman? Another one. Um, that's the thought process. But here's where things have kind of gone off the rails. And if you read between the lines, and it's always tough to do with a translated article. But if you read between the lines, Eric Carlson and Mike Greer haven't spoken in a few weeks. And I think the holdup is that essentially the Penguins the Canes, the Leafs, these other teams that have been in the mix, Seattle especially. And by the way, from a pure cap perspective, I think Seattle makes the most sense, even though they don't have a ton of space at this exact moment in time after that monster Vince Dunn deal. But if you look at the Penguins and, and the Canes and what these teams have essentially said to the Sharks is, if, if you're looking to move on from Eric Carlson, we'll take him off your hands. But even if you're looking at it from the Penguins' perspective, they don't have anything to give. Yeah. They have no prospects and just basically their own picks. And that's it. And so they're saying to the Sharks, if, if you want to give him to us, we'll take him from you, but we're not going to give you a haul that you would be expecting for a hundred point defenseman. And that's really where my understanding is the disconnect has been. The sharks are still looking for a significant return for Eric Carlson. And they haven't found one team that's willing to give them anywhere close to that. And so those teams have all essentially sat back and said, Hey, call us in August. You let us know when you want to talk and, and we can pick this up again, but we're not giving you anything significant. And that's problematic for the Sharks because they think this is a player that you have to get a return for. And more than that, they don't really want to get nothing and retain 20% on this player just to get him off their books. So I think the hangup has been a little bit along the same lines of what we heard back at the trade deadline, which is the sharks are looking for a significant deal and they're not properly valuing the cap space, the freedom, the flexibility from getting off of an 11 and a half million dollar player. And that's really what's holding this back. Now I, I looked at Pittsburgh and now, they do have two prospects, uh, you know, recent first-round picks. Owen Pickering would be one, big defenseman. Um, 
And, you know, then they have uh, th- this year's first round pick, you know, Braden Yeager. So, you know, do they do one or two of them? And then they do have all of their first three first rounders in the next three years. So, you know, I, I think if you're the Penguins, you're gladly going to give up some of those because you're, you're going to be in like a you, you might give up one of the I think this is the point. Like you might give up one. Yeah, you're not giving up multiple first round picks to get this player. I, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm reading it differently. But my understanding was a lot of these teams that are in the mix have essentially said, we'll take him off your hands for nothing. But short of that, we're not, this is no multiple first round pick scenario is at least my understanding of it. No, you're going to give some picks, right? I would, I would think like Sam, I don't think Sam, well, it all depends on which players you get. If you get back some, some younger players, like Seattle does have some players if they wanted to offer. Right. And Seattle, Frank had nine first or second rounders, the last two drafts. Mm -hmm. If if they want to give up a few, you know, majority of them were second rounders, but if San Jose feels like we got to get some more prospects, which they should, that's the only direction they're going. They're, they're clearly, I, I don't know if the organization wants to admit it yet. I think they're closer, but they're in a rebuild, Frank. And they kind of been in one for four years and they're kind of going to, they're going to have to go scorched earth. That's, that's the only way to rebuild in today's NHL. So maybe, yeah, you'll get first rounders. And if you're Pittsburgh, those first rounders are probably late if things go well. Right. And I was looking well, at Pittsburgh. They if were things 20- go well, by the way, yeah. like significant caveat. They, yeah. They they didn't make the playoffs last year, right? Yeah. No, the Peng- well, the Penguins, I look at the Penguins, they were 21st in five on five scoring last year. And Eric Carlson was second in the NHL in five on five points on a team that didn't score a lot, right? Like he's going to help. One of the big weaknesses in Pittsburgh, I would think, no doubt, in my eyes. That's where he's going to make them a lot better. So the understanding is, at least, and and Rob Rob Rossi from The Athletic has been reporting on this, they've brought Chris Letang into the mix and essentially gotten his blessing to say, hey, what, what would it look like if Eric Carlson was here? And Eric Carlson has had some of those conversations with the Penguins as well. What does that fit look like? That's where it really starts to get interesting, right? Oh, yeah. Like, if, if you're Chris Letang, like, I, 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 people are like, well, you can't have too many good players. I'm like, what? Why not? Like, look at St. Louis when they won. Look at their blue line. Um, you know, Nina Meyer and Pronger played pretty well together in Anaheim if we want to go two elite uh, blue liners. Victor Hedman, they brought in Ryan McDonough. He did pretty well in Tampa Bay. I, if I'm Chris Letang, I'd be doing cartwheels if they're going to bring in Eric Carlson. It just takes a lot of heat off of you. It takes the oh. pressure off to feel like you need to do everything. The one I don't really understand is Carolina. No. We just got through this in San Jose where they had both Brent Burns and Eric Carlson on the same blue line, and it didn't work. Yeah, well, that it didn't work because the rest of the team wasn't very good. Um but it also I, didn't work because Carlson wasn't any good. No, yeah, he was banged up 100%. You yeah. think it was all injury, or do you think it was lack of oxygen? Uh, it it might have been a, a bit of both, but I, I do know um, Eric Carlson was playing through some pretty brutal injuries there and was you know was coming back and, and just wasn't the same player. You know, lots of guys, Frank, they're, quote, healthy, but they're not really healthy. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. so we've seen that with a lot of players. They come back from an injury, and the guy's just not the same for quite a while. And you saw it with Carlson, not this past season, but the final 30 games the year before is when he really started to get healthy. And if you go back and look, like he was playing great. You know, I probably, if I was a smart guy, would have looked at that and trusted it more and then bet on him because uh, he was killing it. But hmm. I look at him, and if he went to Carolina, you know, obviously Brett Pesci, I would think, would have to be moved yep. out and some other pieces. But – Carolina could look and say, hey, we're just going to be like the 2019 St. Louis Blues. Elite blue line, get decent goaltending, and have some good forwards. We don't necessarily have a superstar, but Sebastian Ajo could be the Tarasenko of St. Louis. and Still needs a new deal. Yeah, they got some other guys. So I I could see maybe why I'd be interested to them, but I I wonder if Carlson might be like, meh, you know what? Pittsburgh, Toronto. Like, Like, what about Toronto? If, if I they're going to do it, makes it. any sense. No. And like, unless it's going to have seen it before you signed John Klingberg. Fair point. Yeah. Right. Like once you've got Klingberg, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't make any sense now. Well, it, it also just becomes a money thing, right? 
how do you wedge in nine and a half million bucks or whatever the number is? Yeah, well, you'd have to move out some, you know, some significant amount of money, no question mm-hmm. about it. So um, Seattle's an interesting one, especially though, like they just, Vince Dunn just got a big raise. Yep. Um, and like, I, I looked at Seattle, they could do it. But I, the question I have for Seattle is if you're Ron Francis, who historically, Frank, is, is not a guy to make super bold moves. Like, do you think that kind of falls in line with his MO? Um, well, I do think that they're facing a little bit of a, I don't want to call it an existential crisis, but of where are we going next? They're this like patient, we're going to build methodically, but then you get a taste of the success and you get a taste of advancing in the playoffs and you say, well, how do we supplement our group and find a way to boost and bolster it without also significantly deviating from the plan? And I think that's kind of going back to what I was saying about the return. Yeah, we're, we're in if you want to give them to us for nothing. Sure. Who wouldn't take a hundred point defenseman? Then there's really no, the risk is just the cap hit. And then you say, yeah. okay, well, if he's hurt, then you just put him on LTIR and you deal with it. And it's a risk worth taking for that kind of talent. But to give up multiple pieces and assets, high valued assets at that, plus the cap hit, plus the injury history, plus the age, I just, it becomes unpalatable. Like I looked at Seattle and I said, okay, if, if you're trying to make the money work and, and if you're willing to give up prospects, you could make like Justin Schultz, Alex Wenberg. And, and if you're looking for one young player to try to entice San Jose, maybe Tolvanen, who you know was making 1.4. If you packaged up those three guys, that's $9 million that's going out. You bring him in and, you know, then some young prospects. You could make it work if they wanted. Now, they've got some other veteran guys who I think they'd want to keep. And I think for Carlson to agree to the trade, you know, he'd want to see that they're not, you know, giving up too much uh, to come back. And, and that's always that's, the That's challenge. the big question, though, is yes. how often did he stress in that interview, I want the chance to win? Yes. I'm not saying Seattle doesn't have a chance to win. I just, is the path as clear as it is in no. Carolina or Toronto or... I think even to a lesser extent, Pittsburgh, probably not. No, I would agree with you. And And that's that's the tough part. And by the way, you mentioned the the Vince Dunn raise. I believe he's the first player in Kraken history to earn an AAV north of six, which is kind of incredible. Well, hey, he had a really good year, man. Oh, He had a fantastic year. What was it, 64 points? Yeah. It just he didn't have the track record of doing that repeatedly that would allow him to get longer term than he got. Yeah, no, that's fair. But I think he's pretty happy with that deal, and (sighs) Seattle would be. Now, the other interesting caveat, Frank, in that uh, interview with Johansson, uh, Carlson mentioned, you know, some other teams. So I went and I was looking, do you see any other teams we haven't mentioned Mm -mm. that might work? No, I was thinking about it from a pure cap perspective. And I did this exercise really in the middle of the season as these trade rumors were starting to heat up. One of the teams I was looking at was Washington, just because they hadn't signed any of their defensemen yet. This is pre-deadline, pre-Rasmus Sandin, pre-all those things. And didn't make any sense from a John Carlson perspective if you're planning on him being back and healthy next season. Do you need two Carlson's on your blue line that are both right shot guys that can play the power play. Probably not. And high priced at that. So I crossed that one off back before they had made the GM switch. The flyers had the cap space to do it, but that's definitely a no go now. And I can't really find one other team. Maybe Ottawa. But even then, probably a stretch. Ottawa's the only other team that makes some sense. And he did hint, not hint, but he said directly in the article that he spends the chunk of his summer in Ottawa, plays a lot of golf with Daniel Alfredson, hangs out. Uh, That's where his wife is from. That's going to be his home after hockey. So that's the one other team. And what a, like... What a reconnection that would be. 
getting married again between Ottawa and Eric Carlson. That's the only team that makes some semblance of sense. Yeah. And even with and even all then, their... I can't. Yeah. It's yeah, a stretch. Sure. So it's, it's funny. Like you, you have a 101 point defense, but only the sixth guy in NHL history to do it. And, and obviously the cap, it plays a big factor here. This is but... a complicated deal. It's maybe oh. the most complicated deal in NHL history. And I just, I would rate the chances that it gets done at, in its current state, meaning unless the sharks, you know, veer to the left and, and, and Mike Greer plays chicken, essentially that's what's basically what the month of August is going to be for the sharks is a huge game of chicken. Do you bite the bullet and just move him? Or, or are you willing to go into the season like, what happens if Carlson gets injured? What happens if Carlson suddenly plays like a mere mortal again and is down to 65 points? At that contract, the highest paid AAV among D in the league, even nine and a half is way too much. So you either do it or you don't. Well, and I think that's going to be the big question for any team is when they look at Carlson... Do they feel that last year was just, you know, a one-off? Because he's not the only player. There's lots of guys who had career years because offense is up in the NHL, right? Um, lots of guys. But it, it, now it's been a while. But, you know, Carlson had been a pretty productive guy before, obviously never to the point of 101 points. But, you know, with, with increased offense and, you know, if he's healthy, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Carlson, you know, 85 90 100 100 points man's really hard like let's be honest here so yeah. only or and coffee have done it multiple times so um so I, but i actually think that the timeline on this is unless there's a significant salary restructure meaning san jose's taking bad contracts back i think the timeline on this is earlier in august than later because look at Pittsburgh, for instance. Um, they're sitting in a spot where they have one ARB case remaining. Drew, o Drew O'Connor, right? Right. And yeah. that's on the last scheduled day possible of August 4th. That opens up a bot, and we'll get to the Samsonov uh, arbitration award in a minute. But that opens up a buyout window for the Penguins, the second buyout window, that could see a Mikhail Granlin buyout, for instance. You saw the Flyers, they used their second buyout window on Tony D'Angelo. And by the way, Carolina remains a fit for Tony D'Angelo as a free agent, among other teams. But the Penguins would then have some flexibility that should this linger on later into August, they begin to lose that because that buyout window will have closed 72 hours after that's settled.